Welcome to this additional uh, presentation on quantization error. Um, so I'm hoping at this stage um, that you appreciate that the analog to digital converter, we have an updated view of our analog to digital converter, where the, by the input will be the voltage, so some voltage V, and in the earlier representations of the analog to digital converter we showed a single output and the single output being a numerical value. Now we're just going to show it as having multiple outputs which with each output being either a 0 or a 1 uh, for reasons explained very quickly in a, an earlier presentation. Um, so each of these outputs can be either a 0 or a 1 so combined these three outputs so will be a, a, a binary number which will have some decimal equivalent. Okay. So um, the output of this one, I, I, in this case I'm going to have a analog to digital converter with a bit depth, a bit depth of 3. Okay, so I have 3 bits in my output which will give me a decimal range, let's just say that, a decimal range of 0 to 7. Okay, so three bits will give me a decimal range of zero to seven. So you'll need your knowledge of binary numbers to understand that. Um, but each one of these values can only be an integer. Okay, that's an important concept. Okay, so let's take another look at a, a, another signal. Um, so I'm just going to plot a, a signal. I'm going to try and do it reasonably neat this time. And we have some voltage signals, so I'm really going to plot the voltage going into the analog to digital converter. So I have a voltage V, um, and we will say that the input will have a range of between 0 and 5 volts. Um, so our range over here will be between 0 and 5 volts. Okay. Um, now on this graph, I'm also going to show um, the I'm going to show the output of my analog to digital converter, okay, which will have eight possible values. So one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I'll have eight possible values, and um, just want to show each one of those levels. So. Let's just show each one of these. So that's one. Sorry, that's a bad brush. Um, so that'll be one, 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 um, one. Sorry, I'll go the other way around. I'm used to doing it the other way around. So that'll be zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, uh, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one. 1, 1, uh, 0, um, and 1, 1, 1. Have I got an extra in there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, no, I have my 8 levels, okay. That one wasn't there. Okay, um, and each of those will have a, its uh, decimal equivalent, which will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so this is the output of my analog to digital converter and I'd like to show the I'm just going to draw each one of these I'm going to try to plot this graph reasonably clearly just do so I'm just going to put in some horizontal lines to help me okay so be patient for a second and I'll, I'll get there. It's just important that I get this reasonably neat because it's hard to describe otherwise. Okay, so what I'm drawing in here is what I would refer to as quantization levels. These values that I'm showing in horizontal lines, and they might not be clear on the YouTube video, but they're reasonably clear here, but you should be able to make out some faint pink lines there. That they represent quantization levels. And the 
they represent the values, the amplitude that my analog to digital converter can only be. So my analog to digital can only sit, if you like, on each one of these lines. Okay. Now um, let's consider uh, some signal. Let's draw in a signal. So draw in a signal. I would imagine our signal goes up like this. So there is a signal. And we want to capture that signal. So that's a voltage signal that varies over time. Now that 5 isn't going to be there. Let's cross that out. Our 5 will be at this level here. Okay. Um, so just need to rescale that axis. Um, so we want to sample that data. So let's pick a few sampling points. Let's pick a few sampling points. So uh, that's our first sampling point. And um, we'll make this here our second. So we're roughly going to be there's my third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So, so we'll just do seven for the moment. And like I like I'd just like to show the the a vertical line showing the instant of which the green signal, my voltage signal, is being sampled. So I'm just gonna draw these vertical lines as well. Just to make things very clear. At least I hope they'll be very clear. So I'll just draw in a few, I'll draw in them all. Okay. Now I'm just gonna draw in what I would consider to be the um idealized um discrete signal. So the idealized discrete signal would be wouldn't be restricted by quantization. So the ideal discrete signal, so that's my time at sampling time 0, sampling time t, 2t, 3t, etc. and 4t. So these are the times at which I'm going to sample this green signal. Um, the idealized discrete signal would be these values shown in pink. Okay, so that's my idealized. So I'm not restricted by my quantization levels. Okay, but I'll also show um, this might just be a better view than I've shown you before. Uh, I'll also show the um, the quantization, quantized values. So each of the uh, my idealized discrete values. Well, I actually that can't be the output of my analog to digital converter. So the output of my analog to digital converter would actually be in this first sample. Oh, sorry, well sample number zero. My actual quantized output would be the red dot. And you can see there's a difference between the red and the green, and that's the what would be referred to as my quantization error. Okay, in this case, I looks like I have no error. Um, in this case, I have some. So, so in each of these three other cases, I have some error. And the reality is that you're almost always going to have some quantization error. Now, you could imagine if for example, I had more quantization lines, which would occur, for example, um, if I had, if I increased my bit depth by one, well then the number of quantization levels would actually double. Now, if that was the case, if I had twice the amount of quantization lines, and I'll show one or two in here, I had twice the number of quantization lines, so I'll just show this top one. This would be a new quantization line. You would see that the error would be much smaller. So I've shown this faint line here as a new quantization line, which would be there in the event that I had a bit depth of 4. And the error between the idealized um, discrete signal, which is shown in pink, and my quantized discrete signal. Um, would be smaller. I'll, I'll just show you the the quantized values now. So the quantized values, if I had that additional bit depth, it would be very close to the idealized uh, discrete values. Okay. Um, well, the main reason for this presentation was to try to give another perspective on quantization error and to show how the error would be reduced or lessened through the introduction of additional quantization levels. So I'd have more levels 
the greater the bit depth of my analog to digital converter. Okay, so I'm hoping that that illustrated that point. Okay, thank you for your attention.